from today, God has delivered your enemies into your hands. Arise and shine. Your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But God's glory and God's you are invited to join the general overseer, Prophet Peter Kojo Segu, as he directs our path to God's kingdom. On Praise TV Fridays, 4 p.m. to 4.30 p.m., you can also join us at our church auditorium at South Odoko, adjacent St. Anthony School, Sakaman. On Wednesdays, 5.30 p.m. to 9 p.m., last Friday of every month, half night, and Sunday service, 6.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. For more details, please call 0555-241-303 or 0205-840-459. Worship with us for a huge breakthrough and transformation in your life. Can you hear the sound of heaven? Like the sound of many waters. It's the sound of worship. Hello, good morning to you all, my dear brethren in the kingdom of God. I want us to pray this morning. Lord, we thank and bless you and we glorify you for your faithfulness, your provisions and your blessings, even the stability of your grace and peace you granted us. And always, Lord, we see you and you see us and you protect us, guide us and give us what we need in life. Thank you very much, Lord, for always satisfying us with the word of the Lord that could empower us to keep living for you all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. So thank you for your time this precious morning, and I'm here to share God's word with you about the hard-headed intelligence. The hard-headed intelligence into blanket shrewd. Somebody who's very shrewd. Uh, it means somebody who is very cunning. It is so important to understand this subject so that you can relate it with your, your personal life. Because personal life is a business. And life also with other people, interacting and communicating and uh, uh, sharing with other people like in the business sector is also like another side of life. Another one is when you are sociable with masses, like churches, markets, and many more, it goes on, it goes on into international. So we relate with each and everyone, and life as life is like this. It's also like profitable, there's profit from life. We can begin life and you will always encounter minus, subtraction but later you begin to encounter addition and multiplication as blessings in your own life if you manage your life and whatever came into your life very well. And one of the things that can help us to really manage our lives is time. Another thing is the way we think. And then the last one, anything that comes into our hands, whether gold or diamond, copper or silver, what we are to do with it will earn us a lot in the end. And another major one is your strengths. Working for somebody to ascertain benefit or payment at the later time is so essential. So we have to manage ourselves and with people and with others. So if you go into a business sector and all that you wanted to do is that after they have paid you, you also steal invoice and on the invoice, you don't have a future. That person doesn't really have a future. Because the topic I'm sharing with you is what I'm trying to explain for you to have an understanding, to pick some things out of my words. The hard-headed intelligence, it means shrewd. Another word for shrewd means hard-headed intelligence. He thinks, or he or she thinks, he knows much than the manager or managers. So they came into the business sector to steal. Stealing is like they have a shrewd way of colliding with some figures and some people, and then so that they are in to collapse the churches, the businesses, the companies of the owners. 
in gold. So that is it. So those people don't really have a future. Like a thief could come to our church and cut the Barbara proof and then get the size of his body and enter through and then searching the papers or uh, what do you call it, uh, white envelopes and bright envelopes at the altar, people's prayer requests looking for money and went to the orphan bowl looking for money and went to our offices and uh, destroyed the, the, uh, the grasses, the grass doors and then search everywhere looking for money and took the camera and took our uh, expensive, what do you call it, projector, $5,000 somebody bought from US to the church and took the laptop, two laptops, one for Facebook, YouTube, and also for the typing of the Bible. Can that person have a future? It's nothing, but can that person live? No, we have cursed them, we have destroyed them, we have paralyzed them, they are blind and they are doomed for life. There is nothing that can really change them. It, as they begin to go through, there's nothing. So the same way that some people do not break into walls, into people's homes and things and that, but in the business world, they have a way of stealing their masters, their managers and manageresses. So you need to remember that shrewd, it is no good at all. You think you are shrewd, but there's somebody who knows more than you. So let us be very careful that let us invest truths. The word of God is truths. It has the only truth. All the things that we have learned in school, there is no truth attached to it. Math, English, physics, biology, chemistry, and many other things, there is no truth to it. The only truth is the word of God. The word of God is the one that when you put it into your spirit, you begin to have advancement in the spirit that appears, it will appear physically as a proof that God is blessing you on the inside and it to be a proof also outside. So the proof is that God is blessing you inside. That is why you are having that, you are having that. Yeah, so not that maybe physically you are blessed and within you, you are also going on. Some people physically, they may be blessed. They could have this and that. But spiritually, they are full of dark and total darkness because they had a dubious way of having all those things. So John 17, 17 says, sanctified by his word. His word is truth. So the only subjects or book that can reveal truth to you, what? It is God's word for your own life. And when you have the truth of God in your life, even if you are suffering and you are in the business sector or working under somebody in ministry in any area or staying with somebody at home, after paying you here and there and showing kindness and loving you and blessing you, you not have a dubious way of stealing for him or her. Because this thing will, will compound and later it will, it will bounce back and it will really pay you back in full in the near future. <clears throat> so let us learn something from God's word so that you can add it up to your faith and the lessons in life that you have been learning from God's word in Jesus' mighty name. And this one I'm talking to you about the hard-headed intelligence into blackhead shrewd. Let's go into God's word about Luke chapter 16, verse 1 to 13 Amplify, the unjust steward, manager. Now Jesus was also saying to the disciples, there was a certain rich man who had a manager of his estate. And accusations against this man were brought to him, that this man was squandering his master's possessions. So he called him and said to him, what is, what is this I hear about you? Give an accounting of your management of my affairs, for you can no longer be my manager. The manager of the estate said to himself, What will I do? Since my master is taking the management away from me, I am not strong enough to dig for a living, and I am ashamed to beg. I know what I will do, so that when I am removed from the management, people who are my master's debtors will welcome me into the homes so he so he summoned his master's debtors one by one and he said to the first how much do you owe my master he said a hundred measures of olive oil and he said to him take your bill and sit down quickly and write 50 then he said to another and how much do you owe he said 
a hundred measures of wheat. He said to him, take your bed and write 80. And his master commanded the unjust manager, not for his misdeeds, but because he had acted shrewdly by propelling for his future unemployment. For the sons of this age, the non-believers are shrewder in relation to their own kind, that is, to the ways of their secular world, than are the sons of light, the believers. And I tell you, learn from this, make friends for yourselves for eternity by means of the world of unrighteousness, that is, use material resources as a way to further the work of God, so that when it runs out, they will welcome you into the eternal dwellings. He who is faithful in a very little thing is also faithful in much. And he who is dishonest in a very little thing is also dishonest in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the use of earth to the world, who will entrust the true riches to you? And if you have not been faithful in the use of that earth to the world, which belongs to another, whether God or man, and of which you are trustee, who will give you that which is your own. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will stand devotedly by the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. That is, your earthly possessions or anything else you trust in and rely on instead of God. I repeat again. He who is faithful in a very little thing is also faithful in much. And he who is dishonest in a very little thing is also dishonest in much. Therefore, if if you have not been faithful in the use of earth to the world, who will entrust the true riches to you? And if you have not been faithful in the use of that earth to the world, which belongs to another, whether God or man, and of which you are trustee, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will stand devotedly by the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon, that is, your earthly possessions or anything else you trust in and Rely on instead of God that says God's word. May his name be praised in Jesus' name. Amen. So I know you've learned something out of that. So let's be truthful to ourselves, to others, to the people that God has brought us. Like we, we God has brought people to us for us to be under them. And under them, it's not like we are full because for now, God wanted some people to shepherd our lives, to be the managers and managers, shepherds of pastors, men and women of God. And being on that doesn't mean that you are a fool. You are your own. You are still your own. But you need to follow divine precautions and divine uh, directions for your own life so that God could use the authority he has put in place to protect you spiritually because you are a soul. You have a spirit, that's the real you, and you have a soul and you live in the body. So God is the one, because if you call on God, he will not come. He will send Moses to come. If you're in Egypt and you have been stable for decades, for 150 years or 30 years or whatever more, and you are suffering, you call on God, 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 for, for 400 years, you are calling God, God will not come. You will still go through, but God will come through to prepare Moses to come. And then they have to get him from the river Nile and call him Moses because I drew him out of the water, the lake. And then he grew up 40 years. He became the prince. He was to be the next fellow. He killed. He ran away. He was saving his people. You got to know the history. It's a process. So you need to know, even when Moses was 80 years, God called him. It took a very long time before God could send somebody into Egypt to save his people who became numerous. So I'm talking this one about the hard-headed intelligence into black and shrewd. Be very careful not to use any dubious way to get this and to get that. Be faithful to God, to yourself, and to those you are working with, either in ministry, in family, in companies, in business, 
sex text so that it might be well with you. Hallelujah. So uh, the sub topic is faithful with little would promote you with much. If you are faithful with little, your pay is this manage it. Or this is what you earn every month from somewhere. Manage it. Never be shrewd and never think that you could outsmart anybody or your master or your mistress or your pastor or head pastor and do likewise because whatever you are doing, you are sowing. One day, one day, you begin to reap all the things you have been sowing from the time you came into this world when you got to know from 12 years up, good and bad. And God may pay you back. A lot are going through today because of the evil seed they sold into people, into things, and they think that God is a blind God he does not see. Now God is paying them back in full. They are going through a torment. Because from here, it's not they are dead. Hell straight. Because their lives does not glorify God. They are evil people. They think they know more than God. So it is time for you to harbor the fear of the Lord. And see the truthfulness, truths, truths, trustworthy about God and about yourself and all others. You are a trustee. It means you are what? A steward. So faithful with little would promote you with much. So be faithful with whatever you have been commissioned to do in the ministry, wherever you are around the world. Never size yourself with these pastors. It's like they began going through, risk their lives and face some challenges. And now through the power of God in their lives, they are broken through spiritually and physically. So now you are enjoying, you could lead prayer, praise and worship. You could be men's leader, women's leader. All was God through one person. You also had the audacity, the opportunity to do something, singing, doing something, freedom. But somebody puts his, I mean, sacrifices his life. Not that he, he, was, he was dead. He sacrificed about some things, and now you and I have gotten to this stage. So, which means we are enjoying from the grace of God upon the person's life. We are all tapping from Jesus through that person, and we are benefiting from Jesus through that person. We are secure from Jesus through that person, and we should not take God, the grace of God, upon the person for granted. Because through God, by God through that person, it has been well with us all these years, with our children, with our loved ones. And we cannot afford to mishandle because God is a God who knows the, the end from the beginning. Hallelujah. So you can't be shrewd here against God, against authority, the principle he has put in place in companies or on earth or in ministries and against the, the servants of God around the world. Hallelujah. So faithful, faithful with little, would promote you with much. Number one, be a good steward. When you have been entrusted, you have been made a trustee. Be a good steward and take good care of whatever they've entrusted in your care and manage it and just give good accounting. Never on, I mean, in, do invoice on the invoice because it will go really against you. Bible says, if you are not worried, you shall reap if you, you faint not. Whatsoever a man sows. So if you are not really, that is it. You, can, you keep on persisting. Your days will come where, where you are lacking. God could give you abundance because God prepares us before he could give us what we needed in our lifetime. In Jesus' much name. Hallelujah. Be a good steward. Number one. Number two, learn someone's business. What means that manage somebody's business. Learn. When you are on the dam, never focus on the pay. Focus on experiences. I am on this man so that in case I establish my company, excuse me, my ministry or something, or I'm allowed to be the head pastor of this and that, or managing the like to that company, because I work with this intelligence, great people in the past, it gives you the experiences to manage when you have been promoted. A lot of you are looking for promotion at work, but when they promote you sometimes, can you manage the crowd? the people, the, the people that some of them are highly educated than you, some of them are, are bolder than you, they are stronger in spirit and physical than some of them are, are they have witchcraft. Can you really stand in their midst to talk to them or to address the crowd, etc.? So God will let you remain to prepare you so that when the right time comes and everything in your life is 100%, uh -huh, then God begin to open the door and give you the promotion you need, hallelujah. So learn someone's business well, manage it well, 
and then when you are learning you should not criticize or speak against it because you are learning you are a learner you are learning you are like a student anywhere anywhere you have been employed you are a learner anywhere you have been employed you are learning that's why if you are not careful they say if you are not careful they will suck you out of the job they will fire you they'll do that because you are not the owner and you can't just rest receiving pay, 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 pay without doing a perfect work for them. So when they observe, they can see that you are not really performing very well. And sometimes it is not a rich crowd, it's nothing. It is you who is not, you are not really backing up because they are paying you. So you are learning. And we see, if you are a manager, you are not learning. You can learn privately at home or learn from other companies somewhere. But this one, you are under them and they pay you. So your hand, your hand is in their mouths. Hallelujah. So learn someone's business well, number three, without taking care of someone's vision. Uh huh. Yours would not work. So manage somebody's vision because the person put in invested so much into that uh, business sector, and you were looking for a job, you couldn't get it. So then they they got you. They got your number. They call you. Went for interview, and they accepted you. Having then, having they then good thing, having they honored you, bless you. Well, how come you don't want to manage the company? You are messing up things. Look at that. Like in Ghana, you see the government cars when they see potholes and they are driving, they just enter into potholes anyhow. But if his own car is driving and he sees a, a potholes, you go through it and comes out and then he moves because it is own car. But if it's a, the, the 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 asset is for the nation. People who manage it, some of them are troublesome. They can mess up everything because they don't care. Hallelujah. So without taking care of someone's vision, yours will not work. When you begin your own, it will never work. Number four, be faithful to people's assignment to you. When people assign something to you, be faithful. When they entrust you with something, they give you something or a duty, power, authority, and a burden of weight to do something, knowing that it's an, an honor that God has honored you through him or her, or he as a man of God, woman of God, has really honored you, or the manager or manager has really honored you in his company, because look at the money, look at renting of an apartment, or he brought it, and invested so much, machines and things, and many more, and you are employed to go then mess up, to sleep or do something, no, 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 manage it well. Treat it as your own and learn so much and keep learning and manage it well so that in future, when you establish your own, even not your own, your child or your children, begin some company somewhere that what you planted, what you sowed, you begin to reap through your children as well in Jesus' mighty name. So be faithful to people's assignment that they give to you. You see that? And number five, never manipulate someone's work. You don't care whether this or that or that. You just mess up anything and knowing that after all, every month they will pay me. But sometimes maybe you are not observant. People, the managers and pastors help us. They, they, they observe things a lot. They, some of them are spiritually really intelligent, you see? Uh -huh. And they manage and they observe you for decades and you will never know. And one day, one day they can come with a judgmental or a judgment against you where you are enjoying some blessing or peace or joy, whatever you call it, they can take you out, out of, of that. So remember that you can't occupy a space without managing the space that they are giving to you. Because you need to, when you came, for example, the ministry was there. So as you came to join, it has to go forward a little bit. And this one also joined, this one, this one joined. The ministry should move. We should not depend on one person to move the ministry together. We can't use a single broom, single, to sweep. You have to use the whole broom to get all the, the broom, the bunch of broom you put, put all together to, to sweep and it will take everything, the debt away, hallelujah. So be faithful to people's assignment to you and number five, never manipulate someone's work. Don't destroy. You came in to destroy. Then you were a demon. The devil came to seek and destroy. John 10 verse 10 A. And John 10 verse 10 B, B said that Christ, Christ said, I am come that you may have life and have it more. What? Abundantly. Okay, number six. Your future would not be certain if you destroy someone's company or ministry. If you are in company, you live without a good note. If you are in that church years ago and you live without a good note, it will follow you to the rest of your life. 
since you are not coming back to say I'm sorry and to apologize, you rise and you fall. That's it. It's a principle. It's, it's, you, you begin to go through that principle. Uh, because God is a just God. He's a, a righteous God. And he can't afford for you to get to the top without going through what you ought to go through because you mismanaged. You really abuse, disuse, and misuse somebody's fans or ministry or this, and you spoke against him, you messed up, you stole his branches of the churches around the world, and you used it to begin your own. It will pay, to pay back, it will go against you. You will, never have, you will never have a good foundation. As you have done against people, other people to also do against you. What you sow is what you reap. Your future would not be certain if you destroy someone's company or ministry. Number seven, remain faithful all the time because God is watching. Remain faithful all the time because God is watching. Remain faithful all the time because God is watching. As you serve the Lord, and you see, it's the fear of God that will, will, give, will tell you all those things. If you don't have the fear of God, it's like as if God doesn't even exist. As if you came out of a tree or something and you are existing and you don't know that anything has a sparring date, whatever you are doing, one day, one day you will lose. Just go through all that you have to go through. Manage it and swear to get your own at the right time. Don't be envious. Work hard. Wherever you may be, don't envy somebody's children, somebody's husband, somebody's wife, somebody's anointing, somebody's ministry, somebody's car or house or something. Forget. Forget. Because the fingers are not the same. May the Lord be with you. May God strengthen you. May God empower you. May God's grace come upon you. May God open the eye of your understanding from today. May the Lord touch and bless you and prosper you. Whatever is on your heart, you are going through. Any request is burdening you and to be a burden on you. I take that request, give it to Jesus to answer you in no time. May God bless you and visit you always. Thank you for watching our live streams. Facebook and YouTube. And may the Lord be with you and prosper you. And we wish to see you for in Ghana, Accra. We wish to see you in the world. Redemption Power Ministries to come and worship with us on Sundays, 6 30 a.m. and on Wednesdays, 5 30 p.m. I know that your life will be wonderful when you visit. The Lord bless you and prosper you and increase you. Thank you very much. Have a good day. We trust you have been blessed by today's prophetic Bible study. We encourage you to take Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. So, kindly pray with me. O oh Lord God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. The Word of God says in Acts 2 verse 21, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, I ask Jesus to come into my heart to be the Lord of my life. I receive everlasting life or eternal life into my spirit. And according to the word of God, which says in Romans 10 verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead, shall be saved. I declare that I am saved. I am born again, I am a child of God, and I now have Jesus Christ dwelling in me. And greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. In 1 John 4 verse 4. Now from today, I walk in the consciousness of my new life in Jesus Christ. Praise be to God. Congratulations. You are now an official child of God. From today, God has delivered your enemies into your hands. Arise and shine. Your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth. And God's darkness the people. But God's glory and God.
you are invited to join the general overseer, Prophet Peter Kojosegu, as he directs our path to God's kingdom. On Praise TV Fridays, 4 p.m. to 4.30 p.m., you can also join us at our church auditorium at South Odoko, adjacent St. Anthony School, Sakaman. On Wednesdays, 5.30 p.m. to 9 p.m., last Friday of every month, half night, and Sunday service, 6.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. For more details, please call 0555-241-303 or 0205-840-459. Worship with us for a huge breakthrough and transformation in your life.